Hello fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. I am so privileged and excited to get to talk to you a little bit today um, about one of the key events leading up to Christ's resurrection. And this is one of my favorite times of year. I love the spring. I love the weather in the spring. But more than that, I just love everything that it stands for. Just this, the symbols about new life and um, Christ not staying dead, how special that is and how much it means to our faith. And so um, today we're gonna focus on what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane. And if you have your Bible with you, I would love for you to have it actually. So go ahead and pause this if you need to and get your Bible. Um, because I would really like for you to read through this passage of scripture along with me while I talk about it. Um, it is in Mark 14, and we're going to read verses 32 through 51 and just talk a little bit about them. And particularly, um, not just what happens, but what these verses show us about our Lord Jesus. Um, we, if you've been a believer for a, for a while, if you have grown up in a Christian family, if you've gone to church, you've heard about Christ's crucifixion, his death, his, his resurrection. You've heard these things. You've heard the story about how he was in the garden that evening before he was taken um, to be to be put on trial. And so um, what I want to do today is just really look at some of the details that maybe you either um, just haven't haven't you know been read before or just really needed a little review about um, the details that happened in the garden that night because they're they're pretty special um, when we are trying to answer that question what does this show us about Jesus our Lord our Savior um, these events that are recorded there's so much there for us to learn and and to know him better and if we really dig into his word and spend the time and pull out just these details. They're just, they're amazing, they're, they're interesting, and we can learn new things, really, which, which is the goal, right? We wanna keep growing, we wanna keep changing. We don't wanna stay the same, okay? So that's my prayer for you today, is that you uh, walk away with some new information about the events surrounding his um, death, and his resurrection, particularly what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane the night before he was he was taken by by the um, soldiers and the guards. Okay, so let's pray real quick and we'll get going. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this chance to get to talk to these kids, and I pray that they are just able to take away a few small um, tidbits of information that is new to them. Um, and then also that just reveals who you are in a greater way to them so that they know you better and they know you deeper and just fall in love with you more and more. I pray for um, each one of them during this time where it's just a strange time in our world right now that um, you will use this opportunity of uh, less going on to draw them close to you. Amen. Okay, so if you go ahead and look at Mark um, 14, 32, what's... This passage starts off very differently than it ends. Okay, so let me read to you verse 32. It's very calm, it's very quiet. And they went to a place called Gethsemane. So that's Jesus and his disciples, his, his close group of friends and followers. So they went to a garden and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And then he took a few of them, this is verse 33, took with him Peter and James and John and began to great and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. Okay, so it starts off pretty calm. Well, now listen to the end of this passage. I'm gonna skip all the way to the end, in verse 51. This is the end of this chunk of scripture. Chunk of scripture. <laughs> it's an interesting way to say it. And a young man followed him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body, and they seized him, but he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. What? What happened? What happened to the calm? What happened to the peace? They go to a garden to pray, and it ends with a guy running around naked without his cloth, fleeing the scene. How do we get from going to a garden to pray to a man fleeing without his clothes? 
I mean, that's a big jump, right? Within those verses, <laughs> okay. So we're gonna talk about what happens in between those verses. Um, and again, what does it show us about Jesus? What can we learn about him through this? Okay, well, so let's just, let's just start going through it. Okay, the first thing, um, if you look in verse 33, and I read this already, it says that Jesus began to be greatly distressed and troubled. He was, he was just dealing with sorrow and he was um, just really, really struggling emotionally, okay? Um, if you've ever really struggled emotionally, you know that it just, it's like your stomach feels sick sometimes and um, you might, you just don't know what to do with yourself and um, you might cry, right? Maybe sometimes people get mad when they're greatly distressed and troubled. Well, Jesus's response to it was to pray to his father in heaven, right? And he, okay, first go to verse 35. Okay, so he's very sorrowful and he tells his disciples stay here and he goes a little farther into the garden and it says he fell on the ground and prayed that if all possible, he might not have to go through what's about to happen. Okay, so, so number one, Jesus is in great distress. It's very clear, enough to fall onto the ground. Okay, now he's not being, he's not being overly dramatic or anything. Like uh, he, he's, it shows how he is like torn up inside, right? Okay, so he falls on the ground and he's, he's begging the father, take this from me. Which shows us Jesus is very aware of what is coming. Okay, he is fully God still when he was here on the earth, but he also was fully man. Meaning he was, he knew he was gonna feel the pain of being nailed to a cross. He was gonna feel the pain of beaten and having, he, he knew. See, Jesus is what we call omnipre, omnipresent and omniscient, okay? Um, Jesus is, he's omniscient. He, he's, he knows everything. He's all knowing. And so for him, he, he is aware of what is to come, right? Because he knows the future. And the very, very human part of him is going, oh, I don't want to do this. It's hard. It's going to hurt. It's going to be awful. Is there any other way, Lord? He, right? Okay. So he's just share, sharing his heart. Well, the disciples, okay. So go to the second point too. The disciples, this is, and this is something we always kind of laugh at when we talk about this story, but they keep falling asleep. Okay. So, um, so he's going through all this distress and then verse 37 and he came, so he comes back and he finds them sleeping and he wakes them up and he says, can't you guys watch for one hour? Watch and pray that, that you know, you just, you need to be part of this. And uh, he goes back and then they fall asleep again and he comes back and wakes them up and they fall asleep again and he wakes up three times. Okay. So three times they are obviously very, very tired, okay? So Jesus is distressed and troubled greatly enough to fall onto the ground in prayer. The disciples are exhausted. It's nighttime, right? It's bedtime and they are tired. And the fact that they keep falling asleep, even though Jesus is waking them up and saying, pray with me, shows us that they're not overly concerned at this point, right? They're not they're not in that same type of struggle and that same type of distress emotionally that Jesus is. Because if they were feeling like Jesus felt at that moment, there's no way they could fall asleep, right? You're not, you know, you're not completely overwhelmed and, and distressed and terrified and just be like, oh, well, I'll go to sleep. That's, that's usually not how people cope with, with their stressful times, right? Okay, so, so, they're not overly concerned because they are not omniscient. They do they don't know what's coming. Jesus has tried, he's he's prepared them. He's said, but they don't get it. They don't really believe it's gonna get that bad. Jesus is um, you know, he's he tells all through along, he's trying to tell them, you guys, this is good, this is gonna get bad. I'm gonna have to leave you. And they're like, kind of like, okay, Jesus, no problem, we'll follow you, it's all good. Um, they keep trying to reassure him, we we got your back, we're we're here for you. And and they just cannot understand. They just can't, right? Their human minds cannot comprehend what is coming and how bad it's going to be. And when Jesus says he's leaving, it means he's really leaving. 
right? And so they're not overly concerned, enough to fall asleep. So then if you go to verse 43, okay, so you've got, you've got a very troubled Jesus who keeps trying to wake up the very tired disciples. And then verse 43 is the huge shift and a huge change, okay? Immediately while he was still speaking, immediately. So Jesus is still talking to them, okay? He says, rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand, meaning here they come, wake up guys. And as he's still saying that, he's still talking, the Bible tells us immediately, here they come. And if you go ahead and you read who came, yes, Judas, who was one of the disciples who, who was betraying Jesus in that moment and bringing the crowd of people to him in the garden. So one of their buddies, one of their friends is showing up, betraying Jesus, betraying all of them, right? And then a crowd was a crowd with swords and clubs, big crowd, swords, clubs, from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders, okay? So it's kind of a mob scene. It's a lot of people here. The Bible says it's a crowd. It's not just a few soldiers, right? And they've got swords and they've got clubs and there's important people there. And this all happens immediately. So the disciples are still rubbing the sleep out of their eyes. They're like, all right, oh, waking up. What is happening? And immediately they have to go in. What psychologists say is called flight or fight, okay, fight or flight. And what that means is it's actually a state that all, every human um, will go into when confronted with a really, really, um, kind of like a tragedy or something really, really scary. Um, even something small, like um, if you are on your couch and a scorpion crawls next to you, right? That, that I know that doesn't seem small to us, but compared to crowds and swords and clubs and everything that's small. Okay. Um, when we jump up and that feeling in that moment where you like, you feel like all this energy flows through your body in that moment, you, your body has two choices. It can fight and deal with the problem head on. And some people do that, or it can flight, fly away, take and not actually like fly away. <laughs> but run away from the situation, okay? I'll tell you, in situations like that, I tend to be one who just flees. Like, ah, scary, I'm gonna run away. Um, Mr. Brecht, he is a, like, deal with the problem. Like, okay, this is scary, this is hard, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight, I'm gonna take care of the problem. Um, and we all tend to re react a little differently, just how God made us, right? So each one of these disciples, as they're waking up and they're seeing this crowd and they're going, oh, they're here for Jesus, they're here for our Lord, wait a minute, they all go into that fight or flight moment and they react differently from it, okay? And we see their reaction here. So um, uh, they're, they're seeing their, their friend, their buddy Judas, who's come to betray Jesus and the crowd. And one of them, if you look at um, verse 46, okay, as, as the people with the clubs and the swords lay hands on Jesus and they seize him, they grab him, they hold him, well, one of the disciples, and in Mark, it doesn't say who, um, other scholars say probably Peter because in another, um, in another gospel it says that, but um, one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Okay, so you've got one of the disciples reacts by fighting, right? draws his sword, cuts off the ear, and that's how he's gonna handle this situation. So now they're in it, right? Okay, now Jesus reacts by saying, let the scriptures be fulfilled. In other words, hey guys, he's saying to his disciples, this is what I've been telling you is gonna happen, and now it's here. Now it's here. Well, they all have to make a choice what they're going to do in that moment, right? They're in fight or flight. What are they going to do? Verse 50. Everyone look at verse 50. And they all left him and fled. One tried to fight. Jesus said, let this happen. And so they, they took off and they fled. They felt like they had no choice, right? To, except to flee to safety. 
And then we get to verse 51, which is the part we probably don't talk a lot about in Sunday school, right? And a young man followed him. So one, one man tried to go, one of the disciples tried to go with him um, with nothing but a linen cloth on, right? He'd been sleeping and they seized him. So they, they grabbed him too, because he was following along. And he was so scared that he just fled. And as he fled, his cloth was torn off of him and he ran away naked. That's how that scene ends. It's not a scene, it's a real event, okay? That's how that, that event ended. With one of the disciples fleeing without clothes, okay? Talk about fight or flight. Most of them took off, right? They realized this is actually happening, what Jesus said would happen. Now, that's what happened in between coming to the garden to pray and what is, and the man fleeing in, in the night, right? Okay, what does it show us about Jesus? What do these verses show us about Jesus, right? We want to know him better. We want to understand him as much as we possibly can. So what do these verses show us about Jesus? Well, they clearly show that Jesus knows what is happening in this situation, okay? He knows what's coming. None of this is a surprise to him. Enough that he tells, tells his disciples, hey, calm down, let this happen. Scripture will be fulfilled. Jesus knew. He was not surprised by this. So today, in our own life, right now, there are scary things going on. We're hearing all these news stories um, about this virus. Uh, we may be concerned for our family. I mean, we never could have imagined that school would be closed down, that um, parks would be closed down, that we couldn't go to church, right? Just like the disciples could not imagine that Jesus would actually go and have to lead them, we could not imagine the situation we're in right now. We really, it's just not something that we thought about. And even if we did, it would seem like something that would never actually happen. Well, here we are living in the middle of it. So what can we learn? Jesus knew this was going to happen. None of this is a surprise to him. And we are in fight or flight because something crazy is happening, right? Um, and, and not all the time because, you know, it's, it's just calm in our houses for the most part. But when we hear those stories and we see all this going on and maybe someone you know is sick or um, you, there's different things, maybe, you know, your family can't find any toilet paper, right? Okay, we go, we, we come across hard situations, we go into fight or flight. And that, and that is just who we are as humans that we're going to do. But in those moments, I pray I can remember that this is not a surprise to Jesus, that he's known all along that this was going to happen, just like he knew in the garden what was to come. And we may have been like the disciples sleeping, <laughs> right? And going, and then all of a sudden like, what? Are you kidding me? What is happening in our world right now? Just like the disciples did. But Jesus knew and he knows. And we can trust our future to him, the one who knows all. And that's what I want you to get from today. When you remember, when you think back on the garden, what happened in the disciples' surprise and how they had to react it so quickly. And um, when we are surprised in life, when we are caught off guard, when we are confused, Jesus is still king. He still knows what's going on. And just like his word says, he will never leave us or forsake us. So I pray that you remember that today. Bye, you guys.